as the burdens press and the cares distress and the way grows weary and long oh yes he cares i know he cares his heart is touched with my grief when dreary I know my Savior cares Does Jesus care when my way is dark with a nameless dread As the daylight fades into deep night shades, does he care enough to be near? Oh yes, he cares, I know he cares, his heart touched with my grief when the days are weary the long nights dreary I know my Savior cares of our daily Father, uncle, friend, I want to take this opportunity to welcome everyone who are here with us today. And also to our brothers and the families that are overseas. Ano, Heramai, Afo, I see. Take courage. We are all in it together. Please, let us not blame each other. The COVID is all around us. The only thing we can do is try to comfort and help each other go through. As we are about to begin, I am going to read the eulogy, one from the family, they said they will not be able to stand there. Do I have to stand on their behalf? Samara, did you make your eulogy? No? Okay. This is from the family. Dear brothers and sisters, before I start the eulogy, I want to take this opportunity to, to ask a favor from the congregation. Since we know Uncle was so much in love with all the young women or women who passed up his home, I would like to appeal to some of the women inside there, please. So I'm not looking for Paul Bearers. Let the women walk daddy up the aisle. And I know if we do that, his heart would, would open as big as that. Amen? Amen? From the family. Our father, Joseph Stanislas, known as Hartley, worked hard all of his life, moving to England and working two jobs 
provide for his family, his three children, Wallace, Olivet, and Catherine, and his wife. Looking back to when we were children, he was a firm but fair father. And he always found a way to make us laugh by telling us stories or doing funny faces for us. After many years of working, he retired from the Royal Mail Post Office Service in London in 1996. Fulfilled his dreams to return to St. Lucia to live there before murder. Their retirement in St. Lucia was spent quietly together. When he was intending to his wife, Georgiana, he would enjoy sitting outside on his balcony and saying hello to everybody who passed by on the road outside the house. And mostly these people were ladies. So that is why I asked the ladies, please bring him up the aisle. Our parents were looked after by Julie, who was goddaughter to her mother. While the three of us have been living in England, Julie has looked after our parents, and we know that both mom and dad greatly appreciated all of Julie's hard work. People in shops and at hospitals thought that Julie was daddy's daughter. And in some way, she was all in it for what the lady. After our mother Georgiana passed away in 2013, dad was very sad to lose her. But he believed he would see her again. He still had the support of Julie and her family while we were away. In 2018, he celebrated his 90th birthday and we had a lovely day surrounded by family and friends, almost all female. Due to the COVID, we could not travel down for the, for the 91st birthday and he died 10 days before the 91st. Now it is 2021, and we have lost our loving, supportive, funny father. We will always remember him and his party shoes. We thank Julie for all of her hard work and support and dedication to both of our parents. Thanks also to Maria for her work she did for her father. And thanks also to Itis for the support and care that she admitted for Hartley or Hearty Heart, as she would call him. May God bless you and everyone who spent time with our dad. We the family say thank you. Hi, this is the, on behalf of Julian family, Tamara and everybody. Mr. Hartley, very short, about 5'3", very quiet, always in his room, didn't like to go outside, didn't speak very much with my initial thoughts of him. Hello, Mr. Hartley, he would just nod his head and smile. How are you? He would just still nod his head and smile. That was Mr. Hartley. Funny enough? As soon as that telephone rang and it was one of his kids, you would hear him, yes, I'm all right, speaking fluently and answering every question his kids asked. After that call, we would still try to get him to speak. He still went back to the nodding and smiling. Mr. Hartley was a man who would answer when he felt like, and that was it. Throughout the years, he changed. From a man who stayed in his room for the entire day, 
he soon started coming to the living room and chilling with us. You would have to beg him to leave the room to come to eat his meals at first, but as soon, soon, he wouldn't hesitate to come to eat at the table. He hated going into the balcony at first, but, as, but soon after, he would walk to meet us there every time. I remember the first time he took me sadly to the river. He was so upset. He preferred staying home and rest, but we assured him he would have fun. After that, he would ask us to go again and again and again, and so we did. Miss Hartley was a very troublesome, and we were too. We always troubled him, and he did the same to us. We saw him like our grandfather. We loved him as, we, as if we knew him our whole life. His favorite name to call, Julie. You would hear him about a hundred times a day. Julie! 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 And she would rush him every time. Yes, Mr. Hartley. Sometimes if he found the house was too quiet, you would hear him shout, Hey! Hey! And you would rush and think he was something, and you would just say nothing was wrong. Mr. Hartley loved his grand provision. And that's what he wanted mostly every day. Oh, he hated rice. If you ever thought to put rice to his face, he would feel disrespected. Mr. Hartley was our very senior person, like I always say. The fact that at that age he was so independent and active marveled me. He was strong and had a beautiful soul. We all would have little conversations with him and tried our best to ensure he enjoyed life. His smile that never failed, his voice and his little attributes we will never forget. We will miss his jovial, young soul dearly, and we wish we could have one more talk or another river day with him. But God decided to call his son home. We live in comfort in knowing that he enjoyed himself a lot with us, and we loved him deeply. Like Elson John said, your candle burned out long before your legend ever did. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Joseph at Sanislas, better known as Hartley, was born to James Sanislas and Mary Francois Sanislas, née Descartes on the 2nd of October, 1928, at La Pointe-Mont-Ribo. He was the third of a family of 11, four sons and seven daughters. Uncle left St. Pusher in 1956, when I was only three years old. I was later told I was very attracted to him. He returned to St. Pusher to the country after 25 years, seeking property to build a home where he would rest after retirement. We were reunited then, and he came back permanently in 1996. We became close once more after I helped him to get concession as a returning national. He was overcharged since he had little knowledge of how the system worked. During that time, he related stories about his life in England. It was then that my uncle placed his trust in me unknowingly to me. He told the people at his home, the, 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 his helpers and his wife, in case anything happens to him before his wife, please call like this. He said the same to his wife. If anything happens to him before her, call like this. He said the same to Catherine, someone we have never met or changed words. When you come to St. Lucia, ask for ideas. Today, I thank God that I was able to fulfill this responsibility he entrusted in me. About, about his favorite phrase to them was, Whatever decision IT takes, I am all right with it. When he returned to stay, when his wife returned to stay with him, I realized that uncle was the most humble and selfless husband a wife could possibly ask for. He was loving, patient, understanding and would make any sacrifice to serve his wife without mumbling or complaining about one word. Just imagine, he was all, he was the cook, he was everything. No one else, because the wife would not eat from no one else. 
After preparing lunch, it would most often be, be eaten before or as dinner because he would not eat without her presence at the table. He had to wait for her when she was ready to eat. That was the family routine. When his wife was hospitalized, he made two trips every day by bus to administer her, her medication. Since she refused to take it from anyone else other than her husband. Uncle was very jovial. He would often stand outside his house and have a witty combat with every passerby, especially women. He liked giving gifts of chocolate and wine. Asked Julie to buy the chocolates, buy the wine, but me and Julie were not the one that receiving chocolates and wine. He gave it to those he wanted or he chose to. Uncle was so kind and loving and made many sacrifices during his lifetime that God blessed him with a wonderful family exhibiting qualities like himself to care for him. I thank and praise God for them. Julie. 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 There is no word I can possibly use that is sufficient to thank you and your siblings for being there for all of us. Dave, thanks for making such sacrifices in the name of family. I have never seen a family so caring, understanding, and supportive of each other. I thank your mother, Mary, for raising such wonderful children and allowing you to take her place when she left St. Lucia. It was a blessing. May the Lord reward you, Julie, for your good works. All the time you have been working, no holidays, no off days, no sick days, for over 15 years. I pray that God bless you abundantly. A special thanks also goes out to Maria Justin for your hard work. Uncle employ you as his night caretaker. May you be blessed for your patience. Tamara, I want to say that's the only way I can say it, I love you. For the day when I walked in the house and I found you sitting at the table trying to feed uncle with a spoon. Shaneke, you were daddy's companion when mommy had to go on errands. On behalf of the family, I would like to thank everyone who in one way or other assisted in the absence of his children. May his soul rest in peace. I thank you. Amen. As we come here to celebrate the life of our brother, let us all stand as Father blesses the body as we welcome him inside. Please, I want some ladies 
who has put the body inside. The children, can you be at the front of the coffin? Julie, can you join them, the three children? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Bless the body of Josephus Stanislas with the holy water. that recalls of his baptism, of which St. Paul writes, all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We are buried together with him, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him by likeness to his death, so shall we be united with him by likeness to his resurrection. On the day of Josephus and his last baptism, he put on Christ. In the day of Christ's coming, may he be clothed with glory. Yes, as we are ready to bring the body up, and I see my volunteers, and we are going to sing the entrance hymn, O Lord Who May Enter, page 2 on the leaflet. <laughs> Thank you. 
certain faith that your son who died on the cross was raised from the dead the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep grant that through this mystery your servant Joseph Stanislas who has gone to his rest in Christ may share in the joy of his resurrection we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Those taking the readings, our first reading is Wisdom, chapter 3, verses 1 to 9. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the, eyes of the, in the eyes of the unwise, they did appear to die. Their going looks like a disaster. Their living like annihilation, but they are in peace. If they experienced punishment as men see it, their hope was rich with immorality. Immortality, sorry. Slight was their affliction. Great will their blessings be. God has put them to the test and proved them worthy to be with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a, holo a holocaust. When the time comes for his visitation, they will shine out. As sparks run through the stubble, so will they. They shall judge nations, rule over peoples, and the Lord will be their king forever. They who trust in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love. For grace and mercy await those he has chosen. The word of the Lord. Amen. For the responsorial psalm we shall sing out of the depths.
Everyone moved by the Spirit is a son of God. The Spirit you received is not the spirit of slaves bringing fear into your lives again. It is the spirit of sons, and it makes us cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself and our spirit bear united witness that we are children of God. And if we are children, we are heirs as well, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, sharing his sufferings so as to share his glory. I think that what we suffer in this life can never be compared to the glory as yet unrevealed which is waiting for us. The whole creation is eagerly waiting for God to reveal his sons. It was not for any fault on the part of creation that it was made unable to attain its purpose. It was made so by God. But creation still retains the hope of being freed, like us, from its slavery to decadence to enjoy the same freedom and glory as the children of God. From the beginning till now, the entire creation, as we know, has been groaning in one great act of giving birth, and not only creation, but all of us who possess the first fruits of the Spirit. We too groan inwardly as we wait for our bodies to be set free. The word of the Lord. Amen. Let us all stand for, to acclaim the gospel as we sing, prepare to hear the word of the Lord. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. All those who believe in me, even though you die, you will live. Lord, 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On arriving at Bethany, Jesus found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for forty days already, for four days already. Bethany is only about two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to sympathize with them over their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus had come, she went to meet him. Mary remained sitting in the house. Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, whatever you ask of God, he will grant you. Your brother, said Jesus to her, will rise again. Martha said, I know he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she said, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God the one who was to come into this world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, today we all gather to celebrate the life of our brother, Joseph Stanislas. Quite long gift of life. The Lord blessed him with 93 years. Well, 92, but few days before. So we make it 93. Because that comforts our heart that our, my father, my grandfather, I lived 93. Today we all gather to celebrate and you know, I would like to express condolence to the Stanislas family and the children who are here. And as you have provided for your father, as what we have to do as children to care for our parents, you have done your job well. And as we heard it from the eulogies and the tributes, Julie has done a good part as a godchild of his wife. And she provided all the support she could. And while I was listening to the tribute and um, eulogy, I even saw IT's almost broke down while talking about Julie. That means it shows how much uh, sacrificial is Julie and caring for the elderly and she had displayed. I even thought if there is any NELP program, people are there, we have a member you can recruit and she'll be very good with the elderly. I don't know you all do interview or not to recruit them, but Julie has done a good work. Yes, Julie, for your good job. And we have, I have seen Mr. Josephat walking to church when he, somebody brings him off and on, he will come to church. And when he was not able at all, then the ushers group made a commitment to visit the sick once in a month. And they made a visit one day and we went and spent the evening with him. And we prayed with him, we prayed the rosary and he was among us. And he appreciated our visit. And it was more encouraging to him. And he, and he cherished every moment, as you heard, 
as he was young and he went to live, migrated to UK and made his life, came to retire and build his home. He heard everything IT said. He will greet everyone on the road and especially women. Well, you know, women are kind and they're gorgeous. And they are very good. And they are, they are very kind-hearted. And he cherished. And what I what very good uh, filled my heart was, you know, people don't like to hear, according to the letter of St. Paul to Ephesians, Wives, be submissive to your husband. People don't like to hear that words from the scripture. But whereas, Mr. Josephat was very submissive to the wife. I heard it from the tribute. And he was very humble. And he made all his lifetime, made one thing purposely in his life was to be happy and joyful. Nothing could be taken away from him this part, that to be joyful and happy. Now you all could wonder why, how could he go up to 93 long years? One thing was sure in his life was to be happy and joyful. So when we make sure to be happy and joyful, we will live longer. When we stress ourselves with unnecessary stresses, then we will live shorter. So we need to be happy and not put stress unnecessarily in our minds, in our hearts. But what to do? We develop, we grow up like that. Every stress of the others also makes us stress. And stress, stress is stress. And stress goes on stressful. That's our human life. And therefore, today as we celebrate 93 long years of our brother Joseph Stanislas, we have one thing to say and to celebrate the mystery of resurrection. And today in the gospel we heard Jesus saying to Martha, Had you been here, my brother would not have died. Sometimes this could be the expression of everyone because we do not want to depart from our beloved ones. Or we do not want ourselves to die. And Martha sounds the same sentiment like us. And when she said, had you been here, my brother would not have died. But Jesus said, do you believe that he will rise again? She said, yes, I believe that she will rise again at the last day. But Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. All those who believe in me, even though he dies, he will live. Do you believe this? Today, my dear brothers and sisters, every time we come to celebrate a funeral or every time we go to the homes of the dead to do the wakes, this must be in our minds. Of course, it's the death of the beloved ones. We go to sympathize. At the same time, we should cherish that the resurrection that Jesus promised to all those who believe in him, even though you die, you will live. It is very important. And with, with Mr. Joseph Fath, he believed, he cherished every time. The visits from the people, faithful Catholics who went to his home, prayed with him, when I myself gone to give Holy Communion with, to him, and he was very appreciative. And he always cherished that moment. And he's, he's, he's sick and he's getting, he was graciously getting old, but did not prevent him when this opportunity come to come to church. And he cherished every moment. And that is the faith that manifested in him. And the faith that manifests, we don't have to manifest faith for others to see. We have to manifest our faith in God. Because it's God who will give the everlasting life. Amen. And therefore we don't have to show anybody our faith. We leave our faith trusting in God because Jesus said, if you believe in me, even though you die, you will live. And God promised. And let us be praying, we continue to pray that God will grant the eternal life. Like today in the first reading that we heard from the book of wisdom, book of wisdom tells us, the souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. There is no more torment shall ever touch them. I would like to read these two lines from the first reading. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. 
you know when we go and re- when we are recruited for a job we have a, a interim period that when we are tested like today this in the book of wisdom tells us then the like a gold is being tested he is tested go through this time dear parents dear brothers and sisters aging is natural we cannot prevent from aging we grow hair hair grows gray skin get wrinkled sides diminish and our body get shorter and we get weak <coughs> we cannot run away from this reality of aging naturally but in aging there is a lot of suffering accompanied with it when i ask some elderly how are you doing <coughs> they will say i'm fine but my joints are hurting me my back is aching me and this all accompanies with our aging graciously we cannot run away from this so like this in this time of aging we need to be patient we need to patiently go through this time you know for sometimes when people get sick and go into the sick bed sometimes it's difficult for them to accept that moment until they realize this is the reality and begin to accept and this is a time of suffering that we need to accept it and this is the lord is testing us at the holocaust holocaust when we go through our suffering patiently we become a sacrifice to god himself and mr atli did that very well mr joseph he is growing aging graciously i heard he would spend the whole day in his room but being aging gloriously did not annoy him he was always called julie 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 and every time that maybe that gave him heart content happiness in calling julie and he never expressed dissatisfaction and all that was provided he yet gently accepted rice and he went through patiently and this is what is important we have to go through this time of suffering time of pain we need to go through patiently because we will ourselves will become a great a sacrifice to god as in paul in letter to romans invites us as well we all will because christ has given life and we all will be part of this life <coughs> and this suffering must help us dear brothers and sisters not to be afraid of but to because the spirit of god given to us is, is not a spirit of timidity but a spirit of courage so brothers and sisters celebrating the life of our brother 93 years of life let's thank god as family friends and everyone that you played your role in caring for your father you are caring for your godfather your friend your well-wishers grandfather all that role you could have played thank god for this and that you have could have played your role well and be satisfied and comforted may your father rest in perfect peace okay and um, as a friends and well wishers the sunny slash family is a big family i know it is well i know miss um antoinette william and all this is a big family and they all very faithful catholics and this big family accept my condolence and your uncle your brother lived his life and continue to though though he is gone but he shall not be forgotten remember him always lift him up may god grant eternal rest so with this in mind let's continue to give glory and thanks to god let us we cherish our life in christ have faith in him and grow in faith because god will grant us eternal life when we die and nothing can we run away from the reality of life so let us comfort one another eternal rest grant unto him o lord may the soul of josephat and the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of god 
Rest in peace. Amen. Stand for our prayers. Trusting in God's grace and blessings as the Lord promised resurrection. Let us pray that our Lord grant our brother resurrection to be in the company of saints and angels through our prayers. After each prayer, we shall sing Papa, O oh Papa, turn the piano. Papa, O oh Papa, turn the piano. Most gracious and loving Father, we pray for our church leaders. Send your Holy Spirit to strengthen our faith to know the power of your forgiveness. When that all Christians may seek you and worship you. Send your graces on our clergy, our bishop, our priests, and all those who teach the Catholic faith. That they may try to please you, Lord, and touch those who are most hard-hearted. Bring them back to the flock. Run that your word may be shared and heard. Bring all of us and make us one in mind and heart within your holy church. We pray to the Lord. <laughs> Father of mercies and God of all comfort, our only help in time of need. We lift up the sick and the sufferings in our community into your loving hands. We humbly pray that you comfort the sick and give them patience to bear their burden. If it is your will, Lord, restore their good health and lead them to trust in your mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Savior of the world, we pray for your servant happy, and we commended him to your mercy. May you bring him freedom and peace. Forgive the sins he may have committed during life through human weakness and bring him back into your flock. We thank you for your compassion and mercy on his soul. Grant him the joy of eternal rest. We pray to the Lord. <laughs> Eternal Father, we pray for our families. We ask that you enable a spirit of charity among us. Grant us wisdom to help each other, to comfort each other in time of soul, and to live together in love and peace. Send your grace and blessings to each, each one of us and help us to be our brother's keeper. Send your spirit to guide the saints that's family, Lord, that they may find comfort in you. And help us to understand and to accept what we cannot change. We pray to the Lord. In silence, let us pray for our own personal intentions.
We pray to the Lord. Lord, our loving Father, you are our shelter and our strength. You listen in love to the cry of your people. We lift up this family who grieve the loss of our brother Joseph Stanislas. Hear the prayers we offer for the repose of his soul. Lord, cleanse our brother Joseph from his sin that he committed in human weakness here on this earth and grant to him the fullness of redemption. Lord, comfort the hearts of those who grieve, and grant them your hope and faith in all times of their lives. Pro reward them for the care that they have provided. And you said, when I was sick, you came to see me. Lord, reward them for the good gestures they have rendered. Be with them and comfort them. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us all be seated. During this time, we'll have a collection, and we shall sing, Nearer My God to Thee, on page three in the leaflet.
signing of the register. During this time, we have Catherine Knight, Olivet Stanislas, and Wally Stanislas, and Mary Rose Sherman. During that time, the choir will sing the song, Goodness of God.
Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Joseph Stanislas. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again. When the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. During the blessing, we join in singing, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Page 5 of the booklet. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid. Come to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to Abraham's side. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual life shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of Josephat, son Islas, your servant. In the sight of this world, he is now dead. In your sight, may he live forever. Forgive whatever sins he may have committed through human weakness. And in your kindness and goodness, grant him everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Joseph Art Stanislas, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Our brother, Joseph Art Stanislas, has gone to his rest in the peace of Christ. 
May the Lord now welcome him to the table of God's children in heaven. With faith and hope in eternal life, let us assist him with our prayers. Let's pray to the Lord ourselves. May we who mourn be reunited one day with our brother together. May we meet Christ Jesus when he who is our life appears in glory. Lord Jesus Christ, by your own three days in the tomb, you hallowed the graves of all who believe in you, and so made the grave a sign of hope that promises resurrection, even as it claims our mortal bodies. Grant that our brother Joseph may sleep in peace, where he is going to be laid to rest, until you awaken him to glory, for you are the resurrection, the life. Then she will see you face to face, and in your light we will see light and know the splendor of God, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. God of holiness and power, accept our prayers on behalf of your servant, Joseph. Do not count his deeds against him, for in his heart he desired to do your will, as his faith united him to the people on earth. May your mercy join him to the angels in heaven. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. And let's put this to light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of the faithful depart through the mercy of God. Rest in peace. Amen. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. As we take our brother to his resting place, we are going to Latuni. Um, Venlo, is the transport there? Okay. Venlo is there. Someone don't have a transport and they want a um, right, um, what Venlo? We are going to Latuni and then we will be back. We have a show. Yes, as we go out, we are going to sing our recession on him, precious Lord, um, on the leaflet. Veno is there, so he might take a few, but he said he cannot stay for long. So therefore, and then on our way back, we have a little refreshment by Rose. He's brother no, no sitting, no waiting, no eat, no. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hello, let us carry our body out. <laughs> <laughs>
naked cross The emblem of suffering and shame How I love that old cross Where the dearest and best For a world of lost sinners was slain trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown for that old rugged cross so despised by the world as a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left His glory above to bear it. At last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown Savior cares. Does 
My name is Rosemary Siemens, and thank you so much for watching Sunday Hymn. And I totally agree. I think this song is so fitting for what everyone is going through right now. Does Jesus care? Well, yes, He does. He cares for each and every one of us. I wanted to share with you a little about how this hymn was written. It was written in 1901 by Frank Grafe. Frank was a Methodist pastor and he was born in 1860 in northeastern Pennsylvania. And when he entered the ministry, one of his greatest assets was his cheerful disposition. While pastoring in the Philadelphia area, he was dubbed as the Sunshine Minister because of his radiant personality. I love that. He had a special way with children who were drawn to his simple faith and perpetual smile. A series of heartbreaks shattered his spirits, and Frank found himself in the unfamiliar valley of deep depression and despondency. His gloom became as great as the bliss he had previously enjoyed. At length, he collapsed into the everlasting arms and found himself singing Joseph Scriven's old hymn, 
What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. The truth of 1 Peter 5, 7 suddenly took hold of him, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Out of that experience, Frank wrote, Does Jesus care? With its series of commonly asked questions, followed by this resounding reply, Oh yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary, the long nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. How do we cast our cares on the one who cares for us? The secret is found in the word cast. Commit your burden to the Lord. Give it over to Him who cares even more than you do and who has the power to do what you cannot. Ask for help in prayer. Philippians 4 tells us to be anxious about nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication to let our needs be known to the Lord. Search the scriptures. God has a promise for every need. Trust Him, for He does care for you. Oh, yes, He cares. Cast all your cares upon Him, even when the days are dreary. I hope this encourages you and lifts you up. And if it did, please do share it with a friend in hopes that it lifts their spirits as well. If you would like to support our musical ministry, you can click on the link right over here and join us on Patreon. For as little as $5 a month, you can have each Sunday's hymn sent to you as an mp3 and we will send you our Sunday hymn serenade CD as well. And if you would like to support us, but that's not the right fit, you can also do so on PayPal with the link being right over here. We appreciate each and every one of you, your prayers, your comments, your encouragement. We love hearing from you. Tune in every Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern for a new hymn video on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for helping me bring back the hymn.
following cleaving the sky sun moon and stars forgot upward I fly still my song shall be My God, when I in awesome wonder, consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout. The universe displayed Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art and when I think that God his son not sparing sent him to die I scarce can take it in that on that cross My burden gladly bearing He bled and died To take away my sin Then sings my soul My Savior God to Thee
wash away my sin Nothing but the blood of Jesus I surrender is mine Oh what a foretaste of glory divine Heir of salvation Purchase of God Born of His Spirit Washed in His blood this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior.
of the goodness of God. It's all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will see.
There's vultures and thieves at your back The storm keeps on twisting You keep on building the lies That you make up for all that you lack It don't make no difference Escaping one last time It's easier to believe in this sweet madness All this glorious sadness That brings me to my knees 
she's getting older And I wish that you met her The things that you learn from me I get them all from you Can I just stay a while and we'll put all the world to rights The little ones will grow and I'll still drink your favorite wine Since you've been away I wish that heaven Had visited in hours So I could just swing by And ask your advice What would you do in my situation? I haven't a clue how I'd even raise them What would you do? Cause you always do us right Can we just talk a while until my worries disappear? I tell you that I'm scared of turning out a failure Remember that the answer's in the love that you create So much has changed since you've been Oh, that old 
crooked cross, so despised by the world as a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left His glory above.
temptations Is there trouble that the Lord taught us to see our Father for the name of God. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on the earth as it is in earth. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. We lay you in the hands of the Mother of the Savior, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. And Amen. 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 Huh? Yeah. Show them he's coming. When he when he is doing it, he's coming. Hello. I didn't know what he's coming. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Let us see who is coming. Yes, ma'am. What is coming? This one card is coming. Do you know what you're going to do? Do you have him? We have seen the double cure in our presence. Yes, I did it everything in the church. Let's go down. On the Christ I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. Rough of this is clear for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Would my tears forever flow? Would my zeal no longer know? This was sin, would not have When the dead in Christ shall rise, 
and the glory of his resurrection share. When the only one shall gather to the home beyond the sky, and the glory all up from the rising day. When the world is fall up yonder, when the world is fall up yonder, Let us live up for the master from the doors he set in front. Let us talk for the only glory of love and care. And the Lord of life is over on the wolf on the season. And the road is called up yonder of his head.